Three, two, one, come on. Go. Keelan? No. Ke Keelan, where no. are we? Keelan. No. no. Excuse me. Surely I shouldn't be standing on here. You're already small. Hello. <laughs> You're recording. I am now. Is it really low? Is it making me look small? You have to step back a bit. Just, I need to be like that much taller. It's, yeah, it's Keenan, step forward a little bit more. Okay, cool. You're still taller, but yeah. you're proportional. Okay, cool. To our old workshop, like six months. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Number number one supporter, the trains. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Merch Projects YouTube channel. We're going to show you around our sick HQ. Let's go. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> do you want me to record this bit? Welcome to <laughs> the Motive Projects HQ. First, do we, do we need to do a serious one or was that it? No, we should probably, do what, we should probably just do a few so you can choose from. It's about why we moved what this place has. Before we show you around, I'm just going to run through a few of the reasons about why we moved, why this place is so much better than our previous office, and what we plan to do here. So firstly, you're probably thinking, didn't you guys just move into an office like six months ago? And while it might have looked like that, we actually moved in well over a year ago and we just spent months building out quite a large campaign to announce the workshop, which is what we call our Patreon. If you're already a member of the Patreon, thank you so much. If you're not a member, you might want to consider joining. It's where you hear all the exclusive info about what we're doing here at Motus, exclusive discounts, early access to products, and so much more. Quick disclaimer, we filmed way too much footage while moving, a lot of it not really with any context. Wow, that was fun. I've just been staring at a timeline of about five and a half hours worth of time lapses and, and random footage and it's been quite intimidating. So I'm gonna be working through that stuff while I edit this video and if there's anything funny that pops up, oh, I'll throw it in the timeline. So apologies if this whole thing feels a little bit disjointed. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, dude. Dude, don't do it. I still wouldn't do it. I still wouldn't do it. I still wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. If I was you, I would not do this. Moving forward, general workshop content will start to feel hopefully a bit more polished. So yeah, the contract we had on the previous office was pretty close to running out. So I started shopping around, seeing what else was available in the local area. And I stumbled on this place. Now, I was just about to have Daisy, my daughter. So I kind of wrote it off as something that wouldn't really be possible. The thing is, I couldn't get the thought out of my head. This place compared to the other unit was just infinitely better in pretty much every single way. So ultimately, at pretty much the busiest and most hectic part of my life, I started making offers on this place to see if we could secure it. And long Amazing. story short, so if you hadn't already realized, right, we then. got the place and we moved in just over a month ago. So we had about a week to move everything across from the old unit to the new one and pretty stupidly at the same time we were also releasing our new winter collection which involved a lot of internal processes to actually get the products made and out the door. Things got pretty hectic and rather than doing that thing you typically do when you move house where you sort out everything and you say I want to keep that and I want to throw that stuff away, we didn't really have time so we basically just rented a van and threw pretty much everything into it and moved it across here and just dumped it out at the other end and kept going until it was done. To slow things down even more, although this place was finished beautifully with some amazing walls actually, there were a couple of areas where we had to tear down a wall, we had to laminate some floors and do some general painting, which meant for a couple of weeks we basically just had piles of crap everywhere while we were doing decorating and getting everything ready before we could start putting things in place. Should we tell them? I'll tell you this, if you ever move in somewhere and there's a floor that for some reason is half laminated and then they've just left an area that doesn't have it on there, just set the thing on fire and walk away because trying to finish a half laminated floor is really hard. So I just walked over and Sam is trying to mark out some uh, laminate flooring with a pencil no! and he drew a pencil line from the looks of it. This is my assumption. He drew a pencil line across the, the floor and then tried to rub it out. And then the rubbing just got worse and worse. <laughs> and now he's just, walk he's just walked off. So at Motus, we basically do this sort of weird blend of half the stuff we do is kind of computer based, you know, laptop, desktop work that we just need general office space for. But also because we fulfill and produce a lot of our stock in house, we also need storage and we need manufacturing areas. And at our previous office, that was split over two floors, which actually made things way more complicated than you would expect. And just, it was just really annoying. But here, 
we have this amazing kind of weird, it's, it's all split on one floor and we've got these massive windows so that we have these two spaces. We have storage, stock, a photo studio and everything on one side and then a very nicely polished kind of chill area. We've got an office in there that I'll show you in a minute and it's all, it all feels so connected and open. The warehouse space also has this amazing advantage of a ton of head height. Like this room is really, really high, which is amazing because at the old unit, we custom built this mez so that we could have sort of a bit of storage space on top of it and, and use it for training. And, and obviously we store our stock underneath. But in the new unit, we can still store stock underneath, but upstairs is, is where it's gonna get really exciting. Introducing Bloggy, the most bougie man you'll ever meet. For years at Motus, you've all been kind of conned by the fact that I don't know how to design clothes. Keelan doesn't know how, none of us actually know how to design clothes. We just try. He actually did a whole degree at university for sportswear design. It's something that, I mean, we have always, always struggled with factories and actually making high quality clothing that is able to be trained in. It's, it's a huge struggle. We've lost thousands of pounds with mistakes and, and made products that really could be a lot better. It's always been something that I've wanted to improve. And, and when I met Bloggy, it was like, well, you're the missing link to this puzzle. So right now we're basically just planning and working out some incredible ideas and products to work on with Bloggy in-house. And it's exactly what we're gonna do with the Mets. Up there we are building what has been nicknamed Bloggy's Boudoir, mm. i.e. Reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> it's the boudoir. Yeah. He's gonna have the capacity to prototype and, and create all of our samples, which ultimately will save us a huge amount of time, a huge amount of money, and let's do a lot more in-house testing. And it's just gonna enable us to put out products that we're really, truly happy with. And I'm, I'm incredibly excited to kind of have him mm. as part of the brand and, and see where this whole thing goes and, and provide him with that opportunity and, and see where it all goes. So yeah. it's very exciting. Advantages, we don't have to spend a few weeks talking to a factory because sometimes there's a barrier to the language, the tech packs, you know, so I can do that. Exactly. And it means that, oh crap, okay, so this ripped just now on, on prototype one. Okay, cool, prototype two is ready to go an hour later because I've just rectified that whole issue. Yeah. So we can speed up the entire process. We can optimize it properly. So we don't have to go, oh, well, we would like to do another prototype, but we don't really have time and it's gonna cost about 150 pounds. Well, that's the thing is sampling with a factory can take, each sample can take months and cost a lot of money. Exactly. Whereas if we can get it to a finished, really good level in here and then send it to the factory to be made. Yeah. Additionally, Bloggy has been incredibly helpful at really taking some of the load when it comes to printing and packaging and fulfilling all the orders that come through this place. Because since having a daughter, our time has just disappeared into eternity. And yeah, he's, he's just been the perfect addition to the team. Imagine, right, we've got to do a shoot today and uh, we didn't have an extra large hoodie. So I ordered one in, just one, specially. Cost a bit more than I would like to pay for a single hoodie because, you know, single unit, shipping, etc., etc. And then uh, I give it to Bloggy to be printed, ready for the photo shoot. And uh, this happens. He's printed it upside down. <laughs> so one room that we are incredibly happy with and was an amazing addition to this space was this weird little room that we have converted into what we call the deep work room. And it's basically exactly that. It's just a focused room, primarily for kind of editing and computer-based things. You're not in there if you're sitting on your phone and, and like half-arsing work or anything like that. You're in there and you are focusing. This room is currently being occupied primarily by Keelan, Max, and Sam when they're here, and they are editing our next big kind of feature-length paid-for piece. Many of you probably brought Soul Destroyer, and thank you for that. This piece is gonna be completely different than that, but I, from what I've seen of it, I really haven't actually seen that much, but from what I have seen, it's amazing in a completely different way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How would, you, how would you sum it up if you were to say it, describe it very, very briefly without giving anything away? Uh, I'd say it's a pretty good mixture between the first tour we did in the UK and Spitting in the Wind, which was the tour we did in the USA. Do you like the deep workroom? Yeah, it's really good. It's staying a lot cleaner than the other room. The, the problem with the last place is that everything 
was all in the same room. If you want to work in like a clean environment that's like away from distractions, the last place just wasn't really working, so. And no, none of the other guys come in here unless they want me, so it's just, I can get shit done. Editing a feature film for the first time in your life? Yeah. How's that? Scary. There's a board there that has many things that haven't been checked off. I'm not gonna show what it says, but look at all that look stuff that is that. not ticked. Look at this one. It's great. <laughs> As I mentioned when just talking to Bloggy, outside of the deep work area, we have the training setup, which we're gonna be solidifying some stuff and making it a little bit more applicable. But we also have the photo studio rolls up there hanging from that beam. And once we actually get some electricity plugs down here, we'll be putting in some permanent or semi-permanent lighting setups so that this place becomes a fully functioning photo studio for whenever we need it. Which basically means that we can prototype garments up there on the mez, we can print t-shirts and hoodies, down that end where Keelan is, and then shoot them in the studio here, thus keeping everything under one roof really, really quick and efficient. In here, I've already teased it a bit, is my favorite room of the entire building. It's got the big old cozy sofa, it's got the TV, it's got the Xbox, etc., etc. You know, just chill space. But it's also got the podcast corner. And the podcast is something that it's it's crazy because people love it, we love doing it. It's a massive revenue driver for the brand, yet for the last year, for some reason, we've really neglected it. We've wanted to have a lot of guests on, but we've wanted to do those guest interviews in person. And where we were previously situated, combined with the pandemic, just made it really hard to get people down. But now we're bang next door to a mainline train station, it's coming back and it's coming back big time because not only are we gonna be aiming for weekly episodes, but we're just gonna try and have guests on as much as possible. And it's all gonna take place here. We're gonna be doing video, it's gonna be on YouTube and I'm really, really excited about it. Ultimately, we really just want this space to allow us to freely make content with a very low barrier to entry. So whether we're making videos about how we make our clothing, that can happen up there. We've got the podcast studio. We've got the capacity to make content down at the end where we print our shirts, anything that can happen in there. Like we just want this place to feel like we can pick up at a camera, create content and hand it out to you guys and show you more of what we do here at the Motors Projects. So. Thank you for supporting us so far on this journey. If you've enjoyed this video, obviously like, subscribe, all that stuff, leave a comment. I'm just really excited to get things up and running again and show you more of what we do here.